Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17666. This build includes a number of noteworthy new features and enhancements over the last public preview builds, but this build in particular is rather special because it finally adds the one thing I've been waiting for Microsoft to add for three years now. It's been three years since I started begging and pleading for Microsoft to do this to Windows 10 and build 17666 is the one in which that change has finally showed up. Dark mode context menus that are consistent with the context menu you find on the taskbar. It's actually happened. Right clicking on the desktop now, dark mode context menu when in dark mode. They finally did it. I've been asking for this for years. There are still <laughs> context menu inconsistencies of this build. So the context menus aren't the same everywhere. As you see, it's the same here and technically the same here, even though it's a different color. I am not kidding. This is the biggest and most important change Microsoft has ever made to Windows. And it finally means I can sleep at night. No longer will I be worried about the consistency of Windows 10 context menus because now, although the sizing is still a little bit different, they look the same. And this is based on the color option in the settings app as well. So if I change that to light mode, the context menu on the desktop will turn to light mode. This is exactly what I was expecting them to do three years ago. Better late than never, I guess. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There's no reason to continue looking at these build videos. We've finally completed our goal dark context menus when in dark mode. We can now happily move on to Windows 11. Windows 10 is now done and dusted. But unfortunately, that's not how Microsoft works. And there are some noteworthy new changes in this build outside of the context menus. So let's take a look at them as well. So if we take a look at the File Explorer here, when in dark mode, File Explorer now has a dark mode as well, which is kind of tied in with the dark context menus on the desktop. You get those same dark context menus here in File Explorer when in dark mode as well. Uh, the dark mode in File Explorer, as you can see, is a little bit broken in this build, and that's because it's not finished. They are still adding the dark mode stuff to File Explorer in this build, but so far, so good. Um, it does look a little bit rough and a little bit pre-release, but that's to be expected. Over the next few builds, this will improve and be a little bit more nicer in dark mode. Now, whilst we're opening an app here, you'll see that at the top, Windows Sets now has acrylic blur in the title bar. So you can see the wallpaper blur through your title bar just like that, which I think looks really quite nice. If we open up a uh, new tab here, you'll see that that title bar is still persistent. Let's open up a uh, notepad. Well, we have to use this one because they haven't done the thing yet. Notepad. And there is Notepad, and we still get that awesome context, men context menu. I'm obsessed with the context menus. We still get that awesome Windows Sets uh, title bar at the top of the acrylic, which I think looks fantastic. Still got to pick up where you left off and all that good stuff. Uh, and you may have noticed in this build as well that the one pixel coloured border that used to surround Windows is now gone. Uh, well, it's not gone. What Microsoft has done is they've changed the colour so that it no longer follows your accent colour. So in this build, they are grey by default, and you can't change that. And they're doing this for a reason. One, lots of people didn't like the one pixel border and while it's still here in this build it is actually now a lot harder to see because they are gray uh, and i think the end goal here is to change that into a drop shadow so that when you're so that the window in the foreground will just present itself via a big drop shadow that makes it clear that you're using that window in the foreground which will look a lot better it's kind of like how mac os does it uh, but yes in this build the colored one pixel border is now gone and it's replaced with a gray one pixel border which actually looks a lot more seamless especially with windows sets now, moving right along, the next noteworthy change in this build is with Notepad. If we open up, well, we're already in Notepad. If we type some text here and right click it, you will see that there's now an option to search with Bing. Microsoft has implemented the search with Bing button directly into Notepad. So if you're a Notepad lover here, you can now search with Bing, which is great if you are a Bing user, that is, of course. And uh, whilst we're also in Notepad, actually, let's take a look at Cloud Clipboard. So Microsoft in this build has released a new feature called Cloud Clipboard, which allows you to sort of copy things and see them in a clipboard for you to refer to later or even sync across devices. So by default, the roaming stuff is off. So if you're somebody who is very privacy conscious about things, don't worry, Microsoft isn't uploading everything you copy to your clipboard to the cloud. You can turn that on, however, which I think I have done already. If we go down to clipboard here, I've set it to automatically sync text that I have copied. And there's also an option to never automatically sync, but manually sync later. And then of course, you can also just turn off sync altogether if that's something you really don't want to be dealing with. So as you can see here, if we copy this text here and press the Windows key and V, we'll get this um, clipboard. And that's the text I just copied there. And that's uh, an image that was copied to my clipboard earlier. Uh, and now we can either pin that to our clipboard so it Windows never forgets it, or we can delete it if I want. Now, if we turn off automatically sync, you'll see that there's now, oh, that's not right. There's now a sort of cloud button here, which if I click, 
will sync to the cloud so that I can use it on other devices. So the whole point here with cloud clipboard is for it to be a clipboard that's shared across devices. So I can copy something on this PC, and if I'm using another Windows 10 PC logged into the same Microsoft account, paste what I copied here on that device. Uh, so if this will only be really useful to you if you have multiple Windows 10 devices, and I'm pretty sure they're going to bring it to phones at some point as well, Android and iOS that is. Um, but so far it's only working across Windows 10 PCs. And of course you don't have to use, if you don't want to use the roaming stuff, this still can be useful to you based on the fact that it's just a sort of history of things you copy. So say if you're working a long day at work and you copy something in the morning, but then you need to go back to it in the afternoon, you can just open up the clipboard here and just repaste it without having to go back and find the thing you copied to begin with. So yeah, that's Cloud Clipboard in a nutshell. It's uh, still early days, that UI will likely improve and you can also clear all the data here as well if you want to. I'm just going to turn on automatic sync. And again, you can also turn off clipboard altogether. So if you don't want Windows logging your history, even locally, then you can turn that off and it won't bother you. Now, another noteworthy change in this build is the fact that Lifetile folders can now be named. So this was a Windows Phone thing uh, that Windows 10 was missing for a while. Then they added the Live folders, but without the ability to name them. But now in this build, you can name them as well. So if we drag the feedback hub here over the another tile. Come on. There we go. And I have the option to name it so I can name that stuff click away from it and there you go that folder is now called stuff and it says so at the top there which is quite nice also knowing this build are changes to the windows search ui no longer is it that sort of thin uh, cortana ui that you used to have it's now a lot wider and is now better presenting of the pick up where you left off and search functions so as we've talked about before microsoft is moving the cortana home experience out of the windows search ui and into its own dedicated area via the system tray slash action center so this change here today is part of that process what Microsoft is doing now with this UI, which we've got open here, is uh, presenting more of Cortana's uh, roaming capabilities as well as search. Because even though Cortana's home UI is moving out of search, Cortana will still power Windows search when that change is complete. So as you can see here, we can now do more search things up here because those buttons are now bigger and better presented. And below that, you've got Cortana's ability to sort of show you your activities across devices. So this is basically a brief overview of um, your timeline. And if we click on see all activities, that will open up the Windows timeline UI, which has also been updated in this build. It's looking a little bit different. And on the subject of timeline, actually, um, they've updated the animation. So now it's a lot smoother. Oh, let's uh, open up that. So you can see here, if I click on um, apps here, the animation switching between these apps is now far more smoother than it used to be which is uh, very, very nice because in the previous builds, it was very laggy. And in RS4 release, it's laggy. So RS5, it looks like they're going to make that a lot smoother, which is great. So going back to this search UI here, if I search for Notepad, for example, you'll see that there's now this sort of sidebar UI, which gives you a bunch of options for opening this app. Or if I'm not searching for the web, you'll get sort of search results here or documents email and so on and so forth. So yes, they've updated the, uh, the search UI here quite a bit which is very nice. So that's about it for build 17.666. Now, before we sign off, I want to take a quick look at some of the changes that they introduced in build 17.661 because I didn't do a video on that build. The first noteworthy change is with the screenshot experience. They've redone it. So if you press the Windows key, Shift and S, you get this new sort of screenshot bar at the top here. And I can now use this tool to select certain elements of the screen, which will then give me a notification that if I click, will pop me into this dedicated screen sketch tool, which is now a dedicated app. This is the same screen sketch thing you've used to find in Windows Inc, but it's now an app that just opens up into this window rather than into a dedicated system UI function. But yes, this tool is pretty much um, does exactly what it says in the tin. I can now annotate if I really want to and save that and upload it to other places if I want. Now to reopen that screenshot tool, we just press the Windows key, Shift and S. And then there's also different options here as well as a full screen screenshot button, which I can then go into and edit like that, which is great. So there you have it guys. That's a very quick look at Windows 10 build 17666. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy those dark context menus. Bye bye.